access not only access to this place but access to our lives access to our minds access to our hearts access to our destinies that you will manipulate everything to look like Christ we give you all the praise in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen please be seated God bless you good evening hallelujah praise the Lord let me again welcome very specially all those who are worshiping with us for the first time it's always an honor as we receive people who have come from different places far and near hallelujah tonight we're going to pray but then what I'm about to share with you tonight I pray in the name of Jesus that you will never forget it for the rest of your life I pray that you will add it to the archives of the mysteries of the kingdom that you will use to wrought righteousness in this life in the name of Jesus I remain committed to sharing with us the truths of the word of God that make men that lift men that empower men and when these truths come it's important that our hearts receive them receive them receive them are we together you can listen but it does not mean you are receiving you can hear you can even take notes there are two notes there is the tablet on your hand and there is a tablet of your heart it says do not let them depart from you keep them in the midst of your heart they are life to those who find them and health to your flesh hallelujah Psalms 106 verse 4 Koinonia is a place where every time we gather it's not only an encounter with the Holy Spirit, it's a feast of lights, the mysteries of the kingdom, the principles by which the saints command victory in their lives and in their territories. We're going to read two verses together and then I'll just establish a few things and we will pray. Psalms 106 and verse 4. Please let's read together if you can see it. One to read. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. O visit me with thy salvation. Scripture number two, Isaiah 49, from verse 14 to 16. Isaiah 49, let's read together. One to read. But Zion said, the Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. 15. Can a woman forget her suckling child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet I will not forget you. 16. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Help us, Holy Spirit, the book of remembrance. Write it down. I want to share with you a very powerful and deep spiritual mystery. Very deep spiritual mystery. The book of remembrance. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Yahweh. 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 Let your kingdom Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. Yahweh. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah.
time. Yahweh. Oh, yeah. Be seated. Apostle John was banished on account of the testimony of Christ. Please sit down. And whilst John was in heaven, he had access to many, many truths about the operation of heaven. John was told to write a letter to the seven churches in the then Asia Minor, which were a typology of the complete church, admonishing them across different lines of the spirit walk. Then John had access to the throne room where he saw the worship of the Father and the worship of the Lamb. Then John had access to the things that will happen thereafter. He began to see the end of times and the desolation that would come upon the nations. Then when we get to chapter 20, John is given the privilege again to go to the throne room. And he's watching and John testifies that there are books in heaven. And books were opened. The book of life was only one of the books. This is John's record, and we know that his record is true. John said he saw that there were books in heaven, that those books had many functions, and that those books were for earth. There were things that happened in the earth that were captured in those books. One of those books is what I want to share with you what it represents. In the lives of the saints is called the book of remembrance hmm. the book of remembrance memory is a very deep spiritual mystery please look at me memory is an advantage that God gave man it is because of the power of memory that you are able to remember it is because of the power of memory that you are able to preserve knowledge. Are we together now? It will be impossible to advance in science and so on and so forth if you lack memory. Memory is a system of retention. It's God's intelligence given to man. An ability to retain things. Because God is not only a giver, he's a keeper. But I know whom I have believed follow me tonight and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed so God has many systems of keeping things there is a system that keeps the prayers of the saints the Bible says the prayers of the saints arise like incense and they are collected in a vial and stored he's able to keep hallelujah and that one of the things that can be kept in heaven is the activities of the saints in the earth and that there is a book called the book of remembrance. Now, the book of remembrance to a carnal man would suggest that God forgets. The book of remembrance is not necessarily supposed to remind God as though he forgot. No. The book of remembrance is one of the ways that God administers justice in heaven. Please understand this. In the judiciary, some of you who are lawyers and are legal practitioners, you have a very thorough knowledge of the constitution. However, there is a manual, a compendium of all of the policies that should govern the activities of men within a defined territory. And when you are in the law court, ah, I pray that God will open your eyes tonight. When you are in the law court, you not only need your memory, you need the books. The books that archive and represent the basis of your advocacy. 
the judge himself, before he would pass a declaration, no matter how experienced, he will make reference to the books and consult with the things that are written there. Please listen very carefully. And as he consults with the things that are written there, he would be able to come up with certain verdicts. There are people who look guilty until the book bails them out. There are people who look innocent until the book proves otherwise. And then we see that there is a book of remembrance. The activities of men in the earth, the Bible clearly lets us know that there is the all-seeing eye of God. Now, if you studied fine arts, you would have learned something called perspective. Is that true? That means that a viewpoint, you can stand from an angle and they will ask you to capture every information you can find. Paint it, draw it, let it be represented. Are we together now? The same applies for technical drawing and anything that has to do with construction. You are taught to be able to capture realities and images and information from different angles. Now, so when I am here now, I cannot clearly see overflow one. I almost totally cannot see overflow three. I cannot see our online people. And so when we talk about the ability to see, it's difficult for us to understand how God sees. Because we think that God uses his eyes to see. The realm that God dwells in, listen very carefully. The realm itself is an eye. The Bible says, listen carefully, that God dwells in unapproachable light, that he is full of light and in him there is no darkness no shadow of turning, no variableness. Are we together now? So that everything that surrounds God, everything emanates light. And so there is no possibility of darkness. I hope you know that darkness also means the absence of information, the absence of truth. So that from the realm of God, it is impossible for any activity to happen within a sphere that is under the jurisdiction of his creation that he cannot see. Are we together now? The concept of sight, we only know it based on what physics would teach us or medicine and, and all of that. But you have to look at sight as a product of light. If the Bible says there is no iota of darkness, that means there is no absence of information. There is absolutely nothing upon the face of the earth that the all-seeing eye of God, the creator, cannot see. Now, this is very powerful because there are things that you would wish a man saw so that you would be able to advocate for you. For instance, the injustice that happens in our world. Are we together now? People can be oppressed and use their earthly influence to manipulate injustice to become justice. But the Bible records that while all of that is happening in the earth, the all-seeing eye of God is there. A system of vindication. That what men cannot vindicate you on, there is still hope. Are we together now? Please follow me very carefully. So we're discussing books here. God sees all things. God knows all things. God is everywhere. This is the unique attribute of God that he did not share with man. It is what qualifies God to be in a class of himself. God gave man any other thing. Gave him his image. Gave him dominion. Gave him the Holy Spirit. But God did not give man omnipresence. God did not give man omniscience. God did not give man omnipotence. These exclusive dimensions are reserved in God's class. Man does not know all things. 
Man cannot be everywhere. Are we together now? This is very powerful. So the Bible records that every once in a while, God would seem to show up in the earth and then begin to backdate certain things, whether for good or for evil, that there is a system by which God can go back in time and begin to deal with an issue that you may think has been long forgotten. And that there is also a system where God can go back in time and begin to reward the saints for certain things. Now, please understand what I'm telling you. Then the Bible comes to the earth realm and begins to teach that men can forget. Are we together now? Scripture is scattered with this possibility that the best of us can forget. Your memory card can crash. Is that true? Your laptop can crash. There's something in medicine called brain damage. I don't know what it is, but I, I have an idea that whatever it is, it represents a state where your brain for some reason may not coordinate at the frequency it was supposed to. There are people who have gone into coma. Is that true? And they came back and could not identify their wives, their husbands. Is that true? They didn't even know themselves. They didn't know how to walk again, how to talk again. Now, I hope you know that if memory is not a possibility, you will not be able to walk. You will not, anything you did now, you will not remember again. So that memory is an advantage. You can archive yesterday and use the information for today. I don't have to learn to walk again. I learned it once. It's been recorded. It's been stored. Anytime I need to walk, I use the mystery of remembrance. Are we together now? Listen very carefully. I don't have to learn alphabets A to Z again. I did that many years ago. But because of this power, the ability of retention through memory and the ability to call the past into your present, not everything in your past is bad. I can call that knowledge and use it today. Is that true? If I raise a song now that you used to sing when you were small, it's amazing how effortless you will still sing it. Remember, you did not rehearse, but for the power of remembrance. But as, as flawless as men are, they still forget. They can forget. I can give you a promise. Come, show. I can give you a promise. Meet me tomorrow and I'll give you 1,000 naira and excite you. You may remember, but I may forget. Whether for health reasons, demonic manipulation, or just whatever it is. And you come to me making a demand and I say, no, 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 I cannot remember. And I rob you an opportunity to enjoy this blessing simply because I forgot. There are people who are not employed today because their health has forgot. They forgot where they kept their CVs. Are we together now? There are three stories in the Bible that are very interesting. They are testaments of the mystery of remembrance and how the saints can tap into this as one of the mysteries that cause them to command dominion. And very quickly, we are going to look at it. Remember, this is a prayer meeting. Story number one, Genesis chapter 41. I'll run through the story very quickly. The Bible tells us that Joseph, when you begin to read from chapter 39, then chapter 40, the Bible lets us know that Joseph now from Potiphar's house on account of an accusation. Remember what relocated him was an accusation. Potiphar's wife lied that he raped her and then they relocated him to a dungeon, a prison and left him there. And then the Bible says one morning that Joseph, watch this, Joseph noticed the countenance. There were many other people in the prison but two were worthy of note the buckler and the wine presser. The Bible says they all used to serve the king and for whatsoever reason they annoyed him. 
and he threw them into the dungeon. And so they were there with Joseph. And then the Bible records that Joseph, on seeing them, he called for their attention. And then they communicated dreams they had heard. And Joseph said, tell me the dream and I'll help you. Let's see what can happen. And then the butler brought his own dream. And then the wine presser started first. And the interpretation of his dream was in three days. The king, the pharaoh of Egypt, will call you out of the dungeon and you will be restored back to the palace where you will serve. The butler was impressed at this news and said, I also dreamt. And he said, okay, tell me your own dream. I was holding three baskets upon my head full of bread, he said. And suddenly the ravens came and ate of the bread. And Joseph said, oh dear, this is what it means. In three days you will also go out of here. But the only issue is that when you are out of here, you will be hung and the birds will eat your flesh. So he was done and then he quickly told the wine presser, please, when you go to Pharaoh, do not forget remember me uh, tell pharaoh now that you are with me in the prison we don't lie in the prison there's no point lying you are already there prison is where they tell the truth a lie is told so you will not go there but once you are there you see that so at least we've been able to discuss as co-prisoners you know the truth now please go to pharaoh and use the opportunity you have and tell him that there is a man who is who has been unjustly accused and whose destiny has been unjustly tied i can imagine the wine press i say no problem god bless you when i go back the first thing i will do is to tell i must make reference to the person who prophesied to me it's amazing how good things can make you forget where you came from and can make you forget that you need to help others too. This is man for you. Are we together now? I, I can imagine them hugging themselves, loving themselves, blessing themselves. And saying, look, I'm not sure you will stay more than one week in this prison again. Now that I'm out, by evening, just imagine in the prison that we are discussing your issue. And Joseph will say, thank you. But the Bible, I love the Bible. The Bible says that when he was reinstated, it noted that the man forgot Joseph. Joseph remained in the prison for two years because one man's memory went bad. Please understand the implication of this. Not because his skill went down. Not because God was no longer with him. The memory of his helper could no longer capture the need to help him. And the man was there, full of grace, full of gifts, full of potentials, full of prophecy, full of dreams, but at the mercy of one man's memory. Are we together now? Then the Bible says, when God was now ready to remember by himself, Genesis 41, let's start from there. I've saved the long reading of chapter 39 and 40. Genesis 41. Let's start from verse 1. And it came to pass at the end of what? Two full years. Take note of that information. Two full years. That Pharaoh dreamed. And behold, he stood by a river. Verse 2. And behold, there came up out of this this and that and that. Jump to verse 9. Let's save time. Verse 9. Now, remember, let me just save us the stress. He gathered everybody, the sorcerers and everyone and said, I have dreamed a dream that has troubled me. The Pharaoh is speaking now. And he attempted to get those who would interpret for him. And they could not interpret and then the bible says verse 9 then spake the chief butler unto pharaoh saying i do remember i do remember my faults this day next verse pharaoh was wrought with his servants 
and put me in word in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he, and we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. Read on. And there was with us a young man. Was he not supposed to say this earlier? But because he could not remember, two full years were added to a man's experience. And now by the mercy of God, look how effortless he's remembering everything. That means the information was still in his memory. Something stopped it from coming to light. Follow me, please. It does not look like this man forgot the story. So why could he not remember? Look how articulate he is in stating everything. Remember, his brother was now two years old in the grave. He had died. And he still remembered everything. He says, there was this young man, an Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream did he interpret. 3, 13. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me, he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. 14. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The power of remembrance. Then, only after remembrance, then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him hastily. Hastily. That means speed was a possibility in his life. But just because the memory of the benevolence, what he did, could not be remembered, this man remained in the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Now, when you begin to read the remaining parts, after interpreting the dream, at that moment, Joseph is reinstated. And not only reinstated, promoted to get to a point where he became the prime minister of Egypt. And Pharaoh made a declaration that only in the throne would Joseph be lower than him. Now remember that everything in scripture is a type of Christ and the church. Are we together? Number two, everything in scripture is prophecy. The Bible says the things that were written aforetime, they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. Are we together now? Yes. So Joseph is put on that throne and then they bring him an Egyptian wife are we together now the daughter of Potiphera the Bible says the priest of old and she became his wife and they too became the rulers of Egypt and under their leadership Egypt began to thrive and excel even in the times of famine now notice everyone who came to buy grain to survive only did that because one man remembered. Look at the miracles that were associated with remembrance. The reinstating of a man, the fulfillment of a prophecy, the saving of a nation and the then world from famine for seven years were at the mercy of one man's memory. Everybody say the book of remembrance. If one man's memory can produce that kind of boomerang effect, one man just remembering and the king fetches him from a dungeon and he becomes a representation of God's purposes within his day. Then it means there is something we need to know about the power of remembrance. Number two. In Isaiah chapter 38, please give it to us verse 1. The Bible talks about a man called Hezekiah. Are we together now? In those days, verse 1, please look up. Hezekiah was sick unto death. Everybody say unto death. That means that something was about to end in his life. And the Bible says, Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said, Thus saith the Lord. Now when God is speaking, and, and I hope you know that Isaiah was not a fake prophet. Isaiah was a genuine prophet. Thus saith the Lord, set your house in order, for thou shalt die. 
and not live. Who is speaking? God is speaking through a mouthpiece called Isaiah and saying, Hezekiah, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you are not going to recover. You will die. And Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. Let's see the contents of Hezekiah's prayer. Ready? And he said, everybody, remember now. Remember when? I remember my wrong this day. That's what the butler said. Remember now, O oh Lord, I beseech thee. How I have walked before you. Go to the archives and check. God of heaven, I know there is a verdict upon me now. But I place a demand on the mystery of remembrance. Remember that you are a just God. Righteousness and justice are the foundations. I'm, I've become a lawyer at the point of death. I need to plead a case and I'm using the remembrance. He says, I have walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart and I have done that which is good in your sight. Is it not written that if they obey and serve me, they will spend their years in prosperity? Is that true? Isaiah is bringing before God. He's saying, Lord, I know you are God, but something is wrong with this verdict. I know that you can remember there are archives, testaments of my uprightness before you. And I bring it before you. And I plead, although you are God, remember. Next verse. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah again. So the Bible is showing us how God remembers. Now watch this. He's praying. Remember the content of his prayer. Remember. The Bible is showing us how God remembers. That when God remembers a thing or a person, this is how he acts. Verse 4 again, please. Let's go back to verse 4 so that we understand what we are doing. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah saying, next verse. Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard your prayer of remembrance. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will add to thy days 15 years. Verse 6. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. And then you will read on, he used the sun as a sign to go back 15 degrees. So that he would know the certainty of the things that were spoken. Everybody say remembrance. If you knew Isaiah and Isaiah died, you say, oh dear, I mean Hezekiah. Hezekiah, you have gone. But Hezekiah refused to die. And Hezekiah used remembrance to insist that, oh God, remember I have walked uprightly before you. And the Bible says God remembered he turned his situation around. The last story is a prayer meeting. Parush kalabrakosi atakadosh. Story, story. Once upon a time, there was a king called Ahasuerus. And that king, the Bible records that he was lord over 127 provinces. Then the Bible lets us know that he was married to a woman called Vashti and that the king would usually, as they did in those days, flaunt their glory, including their wives. Are we together? And it was time to bring Vashti to the scene and Vashti refused. And I hope you know that what Vashti did was not really, it was an offense, but it was not that bad. It was because she was in a position that she had the power to influence other women. If the king, Ahasuerus, was not a king, an ordinary man, the suggestion would be counseling. Counsel them and say, that's all right. You are not the first. Just make sure you don't act like a stupid woman tomorrow. But because she was in a position... The king was such a nice man, he didn't want to act. But his advisors came and said, no, 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 no. These people are models. That means not every offense carries the same gravity at every level. You will do tomorrow what you did today and the consequence may be more. 
Are you seeing that now? And then the Bible says, Vashti is banished. Then the scene changes. And the king calls for young virgins to come all within the province. And then the Bible says, in Shushan, there was a little village girl called Hadassah. Are we together? Yes. The, she was the niece of Mordecai, one who sat at the gate. Now, please follow my story. Then the Bible says, a time came when certain people were conniving to dethrone Ahasuerus. And Mordecai heard that information and he took it to the king and told the king that this and that, such and such is to happen. And they apprehended the people and justice was administered. Then the Bible says it was recorded and left. Are we together now? Yes. So, cut the long story short, Esther becomes queen. But in that same palace, the right hand man of the king, who was a friend to Vashti, obviously. Are we together now? By the name Haman. The Bible says that this man was antagonistic to the purposes of God. He hated the Jews. I believe had they left her man for long enough, one day he would have implicated Esther herself. Because his plan, the Bible says, was to annihilate the Jews one by one. He would first focus on the ones outside the palace and then deal with the ones within the palace. So her man was making life very difficult. Are we together now? And then every other thing that happens is the hand of God and how he delivers people. But now let's go very quickly to Esther chapter 6. On that night, look up please. On that night, could not the king sleep? And he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles. And they were read before the king. I hope you know that the book of Esther, again, is a type of our relationship with the Christ. Esther being his bride, the church. Mordecai being the Holy Spirit. Are we together now? Haman being Satan, the accuser of the brethren, who once had access to the throne, who was now banished. Are you getting the point now? Esther being queen. King Ahasuerus being the father. Now understand all of these stories. The Bible says that on that night could not the king sleep. Was it not in your Bible that you should give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem? Are we together now? So the Bible says that they were read before the king. Next verse. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bithana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on King Ahasuerus. Verse 3. And the king said, what honor and dignity hath been done, not will be done. That means under normal circumstances, this man should not be in this situation after communicating that level of benevolence. What had been done to this man, Mordecai, for this? Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, there is nothing done for him. There is nothing done done for him the company runs by your intelligence but there is nothing done for him the lives and the destiny saved through your love for God but nothing done for him next verse and the king said who is in the court now her man was coming to the king the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai. Look at this, this, this wicked Luciferian type of attitude. That means if the book of remembrance were not open for three more days, Mordecai would have died. Remember, it coincided with when you wanted to get the permission to finally finish him. Ah, 
is good to be remembered on time. Is good to be remembered on time. Now, here is a man. I'm sure the man had discussed with his wife. We will hang that man today. But that same time, quarter to shame, may God arise for someone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just when the desire of the wicked seems to find expression by the intelligence of God and by the mystery of remembrance, may God raise hope in the name of Jesus Christ. Follow my story. Her man was in the outward court of the king's house to speak to the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. The guy had dug the gallows. I'm sure in his mind he had imagined how Mordecai would die. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. God can remember. Next verse. And the king's servant said unto him, Behold, her man standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. Let's read on. Look up, please. So her man came in, and the king said unto him, What shall be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor? When God is ready to lift you, now, notice, when he was talking to the chamberlains, he said, what shall be done to Mordecai? But when Haman now came, if he said, what should be done to Mordecai? He said, uh -uh, what will be done to the man whom the king honored? I hope you know this same mystery was used to conceal Jesus. When the Pharisees came and said, are you the Christ? Who are you? John said, I am the voice of one crying. That means I will not tell you I'm Elijah that will forerun the coming of the Lord. Are we together now? Jesus Christ, that concealing continued to happen until the father finally declared, this is my beloved son. So now Mordecai is hidden as the man who the king wants to honor. Now her man thought in his heart, watch this. To whom will the king delight to honor more than to myself? So his selfishness was about to propose a fantastic idea to his peril. He makes diviners mad that God can turn their reasoning backward so that they will not perform their enterprise. And Haman answered the king, for the man whom the king delighted to honor, comma, let the royal apparel be brought before the king before which the king used it to wear. That means her man had even been eyeing Hazarus himself. Are you seeing it now? <laughs> you are told to honor a man. And you say, king, you have many robes. There's one that you wear. Let it be done to that man. When you start wearing the king's clothes, you are shifting closer to the throne. My God, and the horse that the king rideth upon. Does that sound like Satan to you? I will be like the most high. I will arise above the stars of God. The same spirit that walketh in the sons of disobedience. It says, and the crown royal which is set upon his head. Verse 9. And let this apparel and the horse be delivered to the hand of, of one of the king's most noble princes that they array the man without whom the king delighted to honor. Listen. And bring him on horseback through the streets of the city and proclaim before him, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor. Full stop. What a wicked man. Because he thought about himself. And listen, that opportunity only allowed his lust and imagination. Everything he had imagined to happen, by all means, now he had the chance. And he said, King, this is what should be done to that man. Next verse. Hallelujah. Ah. Then the king said to her man, Make haste. And take the apparel and the horse that thou hast said 
and do even so to Joshua Selman. There is a strong anointing on what I share with you. That seated at the king's gate, let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Nothing. Next verse. Then took Haman the apparel and the horse and arrayed Mordecai and brought him before the horseback through the street of the city. And Haman was dragging Mordecai. Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor. Next verse. And Mordecai came again to the king's gate. Now, notice this. Let me explain to you what this means. Look up. After all that glamour, when Mordecai was done, he returned back to the gate and sat there. Will you climb the king's horse with his apparel and not go to the throne and sit down? Mordecai said, I will stay where I was lifted. There was a place I stayed. Even though I am rising, I will not forget that it was my service at the gate that caused remembrance to come. Can you wear the king's robe, ride the king's horse, and still remain where the king kept you? The king had not promoted him. The king gave an instruction. I'm sure while Mordecai was on that horse, he was saying, don't be carried away. You are not yet in the palace. You will go there, but you are not yet there. And he came down. Imagine the entire crowd. Say, Mordecai, I'm sure you are the assistant now. And he says, watch me. Let me return back to the place from whence that grace found me. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord of Lord. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of Lords. Your glorious majesty. Someone be Mordecai tonight. Hey. Listen, this right here is how great men fall. When they are tested with power, when they are tested with lifting, when they are tested with the anointing, when God begins to lift you and sudden lifting come overnight, chances are that you will forget. Deuteronomy chapter 8, don't turn there. It says, let it not be that when you have built houses, when you have done all these things, you will say, my power and my might has gotten this. He said, but thou shall remember. Listen, it's not only God alone that has a book of remembrance. Men must have books of remembrance. When David stood before Goliath, he said, the God who delivered me I remember what happened. The God who delivered me from the bear, delivered me from the lion today, he would deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, 
and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Forget not. Forget not that he took you from nothing. Forget not that there were 10 of you in your family and you are the first to rise now. Forget not that it was, you, you started rising before you knew anything about favor. Forget not. Let's just stay here and let me teach you something very powerful, my brothers and my sisters. A man who can remember is a man who can be sustained. A man who can remember the faithfulness of God. Remember where you were yesterday. Remember the hand that lifted you. That is the man that will never go down. Pastors forget. Businessmen forget. Years ago, I remember I watched a Nigerian film of a village girl who was loved by a wealthy man. I don't know the name of the film. I don't even know who acted it. Are we together now? And he picked this village girl. I think she was selling something, granotos, you know, the way they do Nigerian films. And he saw her and liked her and picked her. His parents insulted him. He said, kill me, I will marry this village girl. And then like 11 years or so down the line, she had become the wife of this man. And there was another village girl who was a house help in that house and this one's village girl ill-treated this woman ill-treated the young girl until one time i think she got blind or paralyzed or something and when she was paralyzed it was the small girl that stayed with her in the hospital and then a pastor came to pray for her for uh, uh, healing or something and then she began to remember that all of this and that and that then the long and short of the Nigerian film is that she later discovered that that girl was her sister the little girl I think the, maybe the mother had the child somewhere or so that was her sister that she was ill treating let me tell you this the bliss of the palace made the butler to forget the bliss of greatness the applause of men. You know, most people sit down and say, what is there in fame? What? No, 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 no. There is a reason why remembrance is necessary. You want sustainable anointing? You want sustainable impact? Please learn to remember. You need to have a book of remembrance that is in the similitude of that which is on the throne. I remember that 10 years ago when I was nothing, this gentleman came. I remember when I was soaking Gary, for instance, you will say, I remember. So that you don't see him 10 years later and push him. No. There are mistakes you make when you are outside of the palace. It does not matter. If you make those mistakes in the palace, you will pay for it. First, he could make any mistake outside the palace and go scot free. But now this mistake on the throne would cost her so much. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Thou shalt remember. Many have forgotten their fathers. Many have forgotten their mothers. Many have forgotten those who played all kinds of roles in their lives. Many have forgotten the God that lifted them. Many have forgotten the hand that helped them. Please listen to what I'm telling you. God is speaking to someone here. That a man can rise so high that the scar of yesterday's pain can so erode from your life and your mind. It will never look like you were there. It will never look like you ever climbed a bike in your life. It will, it will never look like you soaked Gary. I know sometimes we are excellent people, but sometimes we allow the deception of success to so swallow us that we lose the ability to forget. I have learned as a personal principle that modesty is the closest way to remember. When you live a life that is modest, temperate, the Bible calls it, that he that strives for mastery is temperate. That means define boundaries. 
It was a mistake Solomon made. He refused to be temperate. By the time we get to Ecclesiastes, Solomon was a man who was utterly lawless and careless. See, let me tell you this. I believe in prosperity. I believe in all the blessings of God. But look at me, believers. There is only so much cloth you can wear. There is only so much food you can eat. Are we together now? This is all the stomach you have. Another one will not come from anywhere. Thank God for all the cars you will have. You will not remove one leg and put it in one jeep. And remove your head and put it in another car. The way we approach success, if not guided by these mysteries, many people will fall by the wayside. This is why you find out, uh, respectfully speaking, this is true for men of God, it's true for business people, it's true for politicians. They begin to rise and when the whole world is watching, suddenly they vanish out of thin air. The mistake of Haman and the wisdom of Mordecai are two lessons we must learn. Mordecai rides on a horse, the king's horse. That honor is an honor that I don't think even the queen had. And when Mordecai dropped, he said, thank you, Haman. He returned back to the king's gate. That's where they found him. Was it not on your knees the anointing found you? Have you returned back? <laughs> Was it not in the place of fasting and prayer that grace met you? Was it not in the place of dedication where you will roll like this, my dear brother that was rolling left and right? I'm sure for some of you that was so embarrassing. This guy is falling his hand. So a, a deceptive approach to life tells us. Listen, if you were lifted on your knees, remain on your knees. If you were lifted while singing his praise, remain singing his praise it's very uncomfortable to remain on your knees when the world is watching you it's embarrassing you are not that naive you should stand so you can shine apostle joshua selman the man of god anointed but when you remember that if god forgets you anything can happen to you when God forgets you, anything can happen. It's a lesson. We're still going to move on, but I need you to get this. Listen, I have shared this for years and told people, be careful. I have warned many people in my life and said, if, if you don't pay attention with the way you are managing success, you will fall by the wayside. It was not prophecy. Some of them thought it was nonsense. Nonsense. And today, sadly speaking, many of them have gone down as if it was not God that lifted them. Do you know the higher you rise, the more slippery the path is? A day can come when you will even be ashamed to roll before God. Why will I roll my designers on the ground? In the presence of kings and in the presence of nobles this was the mistake that Saul's daughter made that made her remain barren when David it was time to take the ark David danced and danced and rejoiced like a fool and the daughter of Saul said king you are no longer a shepherd you are carrying a stupid bush mindset you want to embarrass yourself. You are no longer, you are a king. Act like royalty. And he said, I'm dancing before God who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me. And the Bible says, God had that conversation. When God had that conversation, no matter what would have happened, she wouldn't have given birth. Because an indignation rose. I continue to tell God I say Lord I remain your boy huh? I am other people's father I am other people's mentor I am other people's role model thank God for that but I remain your boy you will always meet me where you found me Adam where are you I heard thy voice but I hid because I was naked 
he said, her man, let's continue, sit please. Her man hasted to his house, mourning, crying, and having his head covered. Next verse. And her man told Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends, everything that had befallen him. And said, his wise men and Zeresh, listen, then said his wise men and Zeresh, his wife, unto him, if Mordecai be the seed of the Jews before whom thou hast begun to fall thou shall not prevail against him but shall surely fall before him that means this mistake you have made Mordecai is the seed of the Jews there are commandments that have been given the Jews to not forget if Mordecai is a true Jew and will remember those ordinances you are finished because the factors that should make him fall and give way will not happen again your doom is true look at this Mordecai once at the gate now I, I want to save us time because you read later on you find out that her man was hung at the gallows all kinds of things began to happen in his life culminated by Esther's declaring to the king that this man wanted to destroy her people and the king went to his garden to think like any wise leader would do to not be hasty in speech and then he came and knelt down and was begging her and when the king came it looked like he was trying to rape the wife and the king said not only have you annoyed me you are now trying to rape my wife go and hang this guy the gallows was there waiting for them and they hung him there and that was the end of it and then eventually, Mordecai was honored to take the place of Haman in the palace. And that ends the story of Esther. Listen carefully. There are two women only in scripture whose names became the books of the Bible. And their names were written there so that we will remember what they did. The two names, Ruth and Esther, were put in the Bible. The two women did the same thing. Notice that in all cases, it had to do with men. It had to do with marriage. And it had to do with the power of submission. The power of loyalty. The power of not trivializing the things that God can do. And the remembrance that follows. Ruth remembered her mother-in-law and said, I'm not leaving you. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. And because she stayed and remembered how this woman was nice to her as a mother-in-law, she led her and advised her to a field of a wealthy man called Boaz. Are we together now? Yes. And Boaz saw her and loved her and took her. I hope it, it's very interesting because for Esther, she had never married. But for Ruth, she lost her husband. And now an opportunity was coming again remembrance the book of remembrance that archives the works of the saints and that there is a reward system attached to it and that once you can invoke the mystery that will make God remember now take note he is not remembering because he's forgotten he's remembering because it is part of the ordinances of heaven for administering justice remembrance Let me show you a scripture I found that really, really changed my life. And then I'll give you two keys and we'll pray. Never forget this scripture for the rest of your life. Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 14. Please read with me. Everyone is projected if you can see. Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 14. One, two, read. Remember me, O oh my God, concerning this stop 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 that means you can take any matter to god and provoke remembrance concerning this you can put your this there concerning my finances concerning my family situation concerning my joblessness 
concerning the tragedy happening, you can go before God and say, remember me, oh my God, concerning this. And wipe not my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for the offices thereof. When the Lord showed me this scripture, I remember crying like a baby. I said, this is powerful. Lord, do not wipe these good deeds. With all humility, you can go before God. Lord, I have served. Lord, I am a faithful worker. I stand before God. It is true that I clean the seats. Lord, I stand before you that you can go concerning this. This is how to petition the parliament of heaven. Remember concerning this. And all that I have done, do not wipe it out for the house of the Lord and for the offices thereof. So God remembers. And every time God remembers, God acts. Please look at me. My dad is such an amazing man. Quite a very, very amazing man. One thing I learned from my dad that I thank God for, he's still alive. I truly thank God for, is that my dad was an extremely grateful man. My dad paid attention. I saw this growing up. If you did something striking, my dad would make a big deal out of it and will continue to raise a memorial over that act. One time they were traveling to the village and it was in the night. I don't know what took them there. It was really late and the car broke down. I think it was raining and there was, they asked around and there was a mechanic. Now they were more than halfway the journey, almost in the middle of nowhere and the mechanic was brought and he had to look at the car and the mechanic not only looked at the car, I think I hope I'm right, he followed them right to the village so that if anything happened, he would be there. Do you know from that time until I left home, every time my dad were traveling, he would buy potato or buy something and stop at that house and say, where is this man? This was even, it was, it was more than 10 years down the line. He was still doing it. Remember remembrance there are people today who are not supposed to be sitting with kings but are sitting because the kings remember their fathers remember their mothers you said you are the son of who that man let me tell you a little story in 1961 i was a young boy from the village with a torn trouser when your father gave me a cup of water the cup of water that was worth 10 naira is now what a great destiny because of remembrance. When God remembers you, you are lifted. When men remember you, you are lifted. You need the book of remembrance to be open. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I If you left me now, where would I be? If you left you waited. Thank you, Jesus. Do you know, let me tell you. In my personal walk with God, there are things that God has done in my life. Even to this day, he continues to do them. And most times when I go before him to say thank you, he will remind me of a particular kingdom, not necessarily a sacrifice. He will tell me that this that happened. Do you know there are families, before I finish my story, there are families that will never go down. Do you know why? Because they didn't have all the money, but they left a little room for missionaries. They left a little space. And every man of God will come. You would think the people are in ministry. Their job is to cook. And you would think those things will be forgotten, but there is a book in the heavenlies where these things are recorded. And you will see the child will come many years later. 
Sometimes the child may not even be serious with God. But for that covenant of remembrance, God will come and visit the children. Remembrance. I once watched the documentary of Fiji Island. The revival that happened in Fiji Island. And it was said that the missionaries, the early missionaries who got there, that the people oppressed them and killed them or butchered them or did something very tragic. And then they died. The moment they died, it's a documentary, I think you can find it somewhere. The fish in the sea stopped producing fish. The land stopped producing at its maximum. It wasn't even producing. The nation literally plunged to depression until some intercessors began to pray. They began to pray and to pray and to pray. And then the Lord revealed to them that there is an indignation that is rising over that territory and that they needed to plead the blood. It would take the blood of the eternal covenant to solve this problem. And then they had time to pray, repent on behalf of the nation. And then in addition, fortunately, they found the grandchildren of the missionaries that they had killed. The grandchildren. And they invited them to Fiji Island and they performed a ceremony officially apologizing, loving them, and they prayed and blessed the land just like child's play. Within a short time, I don't know what time frame exactly, strangely, they saw fish in the sea and a sea of fish that they had not seen. The first crusade that we had as a ministry, the first crusade, it was in Plateau State. I remember one of the, the people who was guiding us, the tour guide, he took us to the graves of the missionaries and showed us the missionaries that were killed when they brought the gospel to that land and showed us the missionaries and showed us everything and that from that time that they killed the people, all kinds of things had been happening in the land. And I remember standing there to pray and we said, Lord, the Lord is gracious and compassionate, the Bible says. He's slow to anger and rich in love. We stood there and said, we are also missionaries. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we stand by the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of any Abel there. And to speak and say in the name of Jesus that the land be released. I tell the truth and I lie not. We were somewhere standing and we were watching a hill. And all of a sudden, physical dark shadow. Like every boy, you could record it. We just began to see it slowly moving out of the land. It took almost 45 minutes. So it was not something you would rush like that. Just moving corporately out of the land. Where I school, secondary school, there used to be a tree. The tree, I'm not exaggerating. The tree was dried, but all the leaves were on it. They tied ropes around the tree. And you would ask and they would tell you there was a story that the tree was cursed. There was a story that happened around there. Cursed as a memorial over the land. Why would God tell the nation of Israel, raise a memorial in this place and teach your children? That means they should not forget. If they ask you, why do you do this? Teach them that this is why we do this. So that you will know. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. Keep it, keep it. My son, he says, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. He says, do not let them depart. Depart from your mouth. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Then he says, they are alive to those who find them and health to their flesh. As a man, I've had people in my life who I almost cannot reject helping and lifting because they, the, the power of remembrance, they will always remember and make reference and say, Apostle, thank you. You did so, 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 and so to me. You did so, 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 and so to my family. And they remind me of God. And I'm compelled every time, even when they don't ask me anything, it's like their remembrance of that is, is a debt that, that I must pay. I am moved to wanting to help them again. Many have forgotten. Like Haman. I want to employ the wisdom of Mordecai. 
that you never forget where he brought you from. Are we together? That there is remembrance. Now, let me teach you before we pray very quickly. Two keys. Two keys that open the book of remembrance over a man. There are two scriptures that will reveal these keys. And then we'll pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. This is the first key that you will need to open the book of remembrance over yourself, over your family, over your territory. Let's read together. One, two, go. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Uh -huh. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Watch this. The first key that opens the book of remembrance is consistency of your well-doing regardless of reward, regardless of who sees you, regardless of whatever commendation comes or does not come. Consistency. Weariness is something that can catch up with you when your value is not being appreciated, when your impute is not being noticed. Are we together now? We are humans. And if you continue to strive to contribute in the life of a man, a ministry, an organization, a system, and it looks like you are not noticed and you are not rewarded, the side effect is weariness. And the Bible says, let us not be weary. That means that your reward is tied to your consistency. This country is full of stories of people who deserve to be rewarded politically, spiritually, are we together? Financially, in business, in ministry. But for many years, they had all kinds of hamans around their lives, around their offices. Yet the people continue to be steadfast. Many of our loved ones have situations where they were qualified to be the ones sitting at certain positions. But manipulations happen. And yet they continued being consistent. The Bible says if you are consistent, if you are steadfast, if you are unbending in well-doing, the Bible gives you a guarantee that a season, according to the law of times and seasons, the law of time and chance, because it happened to them all. The Bible says one day, like the hand of a clock, it must come to your turn and you must find expression. This is true. This is true. I met a precious lady yesterday, one, one dear lady. I used to know her, that should be 2004, 2005 in the campus here. She used to sing in one of the fellowships, wonderful lady. She would sing her heart out, dance and celebrate God. Everyone wanted to attend the fellowship just because, I mean, the lady would lead worship with all, she was always smiling, always happy. And then I had the opportunity to see her yesterday and I saw her. She was happy, now a mother of many children. And I looked at her and then she brought me her album and said, Apostle, I remember those days. And I said, oh dear, who told you God does not remember? Who told you God forgets the sacrifices of the saints? There are things you are doing today. You are already securing tomorrow with it. A day will come, you will watch the video of this level of koinonia. And tears will come out of your eyes. You say, that was me cleaning the chairs. That was me playing the keyboard. And someone stands to say, you are not supposed to be where you are. And God says, it's too late. Your consistency. Imagine if Mordecai got tired and said, look, I'm tired of bailing the king out. And then her man would be receiving the glory. Mordecai was consistent. Even when he rode upon the king's back, he returned to stay where he was found. Everybody say consistency. Listen, this is an encouragement to someone right now. The worship team got it powerfully. What's that song again? You are not turning back. Where's Tosi? Not turning back. And not going. Just sing that part for me. I'm going to wait on you, Jesus. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. Yeah, 
That's the song. I'm gonna wait. I'm back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. One more time. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. 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 And I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning. Listen, let me teach you something. Impatience will always give birth to what will fight your promise. You must sustain the stamina to stay. Let God meet you where he last instructed you. Lord, I will continue. Another woman who showed us the power of waiting was Anna the prophetess. The Bible says for about 60 years, from the time she lost her husband, listen carefully, for about 60 years, she was in the temple. Do you know what it means to pray without results for 60 years? Abraham did it for 25 years. Hey, my soul, wait thou upon the Lord. There is power in waiting. There is power in staying. There is power in remaining. I keep sowing. I don't see the heavens open, but I will continue sowing. I keep speaking. I may not see the result, but I will never stop speaking. I will keep serving. I may not see the result, but I will keep serving. I will hold on to the word. Men may mock me. They may call you stupid. You are wasting your time. Where is the consolation? When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. And our mouths were filled with laughter. And they testified among the hidden that the Lord had done great things for us. It says the Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity like the streams of the naked. The Bible says, they that sow in tears. Listen, Koinonia, it is possible to sow in tears. And the Bible says, in due season, John remained in the wilderness until he sees him of appearing. Hear me. Listen to me. You must conquer the pressure that men will bring to you. They will push you into seasons that are not yet God's design. They will push you into things that are not yet God's design. Mordecai, can you remain in the palace? Can you stay at the gates? Mordecai looked at Haman and knew that Haman was occupying his position. But the battle is the Lord's. He remained at the gate. If Haman tried to fight Mordecai, Mordecai would kill him because Mordecai, her man was the king's friend. Can I tell you this, my brothers and my sisters? It will not always look like this. Let me speak to you. It will not always be that you will go home every night and wonder, what do I eat? No, no. The Bible says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. Man of God, it will not always be that you go to a meeting and the power of God will not be there. No, you, you are in a season. Stay, stay, I'm prophesying to you. You are in a season. Build stamina and stay. A day will come when the glory of God will mantle you. Stay while you learn. Jesus, you are Savior, not at age 12. You are Savior, not at age 18. Jesus, you are Savior, not at 30. You are only Savior at 33. The 18-year-old Jesus would not save the world. Joseph, you are a deliverer, but not in the pit. Please listen to what I teach you tonight. These are secrets of the kingdom. My soul wait. So the first key that causes the book of remembrance to be opened.
the book of remembrance in heaven and the book of remembrance before men is consistency. Keep praying. You look like a fool, but keep praying. Bros, you are still here. Five years, you are not making progress. Your colleagues have started ministry. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there while you pray. Listen, let me tell you. One of the most powerful virtues of the spirit is self-control. Many of the gifts of the spirit are tied to it. Why should I keep quiet when I can prophesy? Why should I not talk when I can preach? There are people in this ministry that I love so much. Scattered in and around. They are mighty men in the spirit. In ministry. Some of them are mighty business people in this ministry. Multi-millionaires. You will never see any pressure to be known. Any pressure to be seen. They come and sit down, they serve God, they worship God, yet they are mighty prophets. They are mighty apostles. Let me tell you something. When you see a man that has self-control, respect such a man. It is powerful to have what to say and keep quiet. It is powerful to know what to do and still remain. It is powerful to see a door that is open and yet not move. If the door is closed, it's not a proof of your stamina. The door is closed. But can you stand before an open door and yet not move? Hallelujah. This is very powerful. I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of great people in my life. And sometimes when people want to tell me who and who I'm going to meet, they'll say, Ah, Apostle. This man is a great man or maybe he's an influential man politically or he's a great man financially or spiritually. And apostle, ah, these people have this and that. And I stand before the Lord God of heaven and I lie not. I have never been under pressure to tell anybody, sorry, sir. Can you help me and buy a recharge card? Uh, I, there is a ministry called Koinonia. If the ministry is blessing you, can you send 10 naira? No. No. Consistency. God is ministering to someone now. Because you see, let me tell you this. There are many of you that coming to Koinonia is even an embarrassment to you. Because by the time you come, they look at you and say, for five years, no car, no nothing. The only thing you do is to pray like a fool. The only thing you do is to loiter around. And sometimes you can feel stupid for being consistent. I give you a scripture. You are already opening a door. Stay there till the door opens. You see, the thing about God is that five minutes to your lifting, it will still not be like it. Five minutes to your rising, Joseph, you are still in the prison. While the person has left the palace and is coming to you already, you are not seeing him. Oh, Israel, when God is already winning the battle, you don't have to fight, but you are not seeing. Just believe in what Jehoshaphat is saying. Hallelujah. Consistency. I will pray. As before I will fast as before I will worship as before listen never be ashamed of your today you will miss it tomorrow receive the grace and the stamina to stay let people laugh at you let people mock you especially for our dear ladies because society has all kinds of pressures on ladies show us your husband is he a rich man show us this show us that have you traveled to um, 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 Asia, America, London, UK and you stand there feeling stupid for loving the Lord let us not be weary in well doing there are preachers that need to stay Lord what should I do now should I start a church or should I stay and God says just keep doing what you are doing in due season we shall reap can I tell you this the season of reward for a man's life is a fearful dimension of that man's life for reasons you cannot tell and explain you will see that God will command the territory to begin to sing your songs and to speak your purposes David was going to be king but for a very long time he was in the wilderness he killed a lion but remained in the wilderness he killed a bear 
if that news got to Saul, they would have called him to serve in the palace, but he would never be king. Sometimes don't be quick to announce your achievements. Let God and time reveal it. Just come. Kill the bear, but remain quiet in the wilderness. This itch to talk sometimes is proof of weakness. You sabotage where you are going. Did the Bible not already tell you that you cannot light a lamp and hide it under a bushel? Waiting is very hard. It's proof of spiritual maturity to wait until seasons come. Hallelujah. I've shared with you my story for many years in this ministry. God would not allow me buy a car. Even when Koinonia was on, crowds of people here, I would climb a bike and come for Koinonia. You would think I were a stupid person. It was not lack of finances. Just like that. Lord, why do you want to humiliate me? I love you so much. Why won't you leave me to buy a car? Then people started bringing cars to give me and God would tell me to just bless them and let them go. If I were your relative, would you clap for me for that kind of brain? You would just be careful what you call common sense. It has destroyed many people. The way of the spirit is very strange. I will never forget one time a man came to sit in front of me and said, this is what God gave him. He was going to bring me car keys and he carried the keys of the car and I was already smiling when he came again. <clears throat> he said, this man has not discussed with his wife. His wife would join the people who would talk about you and say you have manipulated the husband. I appreciated the man, prayed for him with all my heart and told him to carry the car and go. You see that? Will I ever have a need of a car today? No. Never, ever, forever. Listen, waiting pays. When God wants to pay you, he will backdate it. Press down. Shaken together to make room for more. Fill it till it runs over. Sustain the stamina to wait. Shut your mouth and your ears against the things that people say and all the rubbish and the nonsense that you will hear people say. You are on your way to a dimension of grace. He's training you. He's teaching you. Listen, you can stay with God. You are lifting people out of the wheelchair and God will tell you not to honor one invitation. Sit down. Lord, as what? Be a brother. In welfare, not even prayer ban, not even any place. Lord, at least let me go to prayer department. It says, welfare is where I need you. But Lord, are you aware I'm a prophet? And you, I will be a prophet to the nations. He will say, cook. Let me teach you how to feed men. And you are there turning food. And somebody says, do you ever have the ambition of being a chef? And you almost want to, want to slap the person and say, are you, do I look like a chef? And God says, turn it. I teach you how to overturn. And you carry that cooler on your head. And you are marching. And somebody says, ah, emoji. Was it not you that was in our house yesterday? He said, this. You mean, I thought you were a pastor. He said, no, I work in the welfare department. What kind of church is this? Is it that they don't see men of God in this church? And you feel stupid. You drop that cooler and say, no. God, this, this lady, I, she, she, she saw me prophesy. God says, carry that cooler. Because it is while you are carrying that cooler, you are qualifying yourself. A day will come, you will be able to carry any luggage and not be ashamed. Because you learned how to carry something embarrassing. Hallelujah. I always tell people jokingly, I didn't start ministry preaching. Let me tell you. You've heard my story. I started ministry playing keyboard. For a reverend who were part of the, the it was a prison ministry. They were part of the people who preached later on to General Obasanjo when he was in prison. They used to allow the mission agencies to go and preach. They preached to him. I used to play keyboard for them. I had my local church 
and then later on he started a church when he started a church it was quite a distance from where i would live i would carry my own keyboard by myself this was 93 94 i would carry keyboard by myself and trek to the international hotel where he was using and drop it there i will play that keyboard they will finish share the grace i will carry it and trek back with joy the only thing i ever got throughout my time of serving in that ministry was one cassette and one bottle of fanta when they were dedicating his album i would have been offended and i would have been angry and say you don't know who i am the proof of sonship is servanthood if you can serve you are a son indeed let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus though he is god he considered it not robbery he came and humbled himself died even the death on the cross wherefore on the strength of that do you know that jesus was almost giving up at gethsemane as a man if it's possible let this cup pass over me i said nevertheless not my will but yours be done so this is the first key someone say i will continue better is the end of a thing the bible says than the beginning thereof it is not enough to start you must trust god for grace and listen my brothers and my sisters i admit to you that it is painful your humanity will catch up with you while you wait yes as a gentleman they will look at you and say i used to know you in 2000 you mean you are still here how much is this shoe you are buying which church did you say you are serving he said now i've been promoted i'm a deacon he said deacon deacon indeed your useless life looking like your yesterday you have not changed and you stand there feeling stupid for serving god and god says continue i almost gave up sam and like i just couldn't take life anymore this is an encouragement for someone my problems have me bound depression weighed me down but god kept me so i wouldn't let go god's mercy kept me so i won't let go god can keep he can give strength to the faint whatever you have to do keep moving even if you cry cry but keep moving even if you feel discouraged keep moving insist that i will never stop if god has not stopped on me then i will not stop on myself I know he's called me to be a worshiper to the nations. My first song, they forgot it in two days. You may be saying. Some of you put your songs online. After three months, only two people liked it. No problem. Just continue. Some of you put your sermons online. And you had only four comments and all of them were criticizing you. Go back to Bible school someone wrote nonsense another person said look false prophet and he just said i will never go online again i will never preach this thing again no reinhard bonke said the first time he used to escort a man for crusade and that day the man told him god said he would not come back again reinhard bonke would be the person to preach and reinhard bonke said he was shaking he was saying lord is this how you have chosen to embarrass me He stood and began to preach and he began to minister to the sick and people started shouting blind eyes i can see deaf ears i can hear people were rising out of wheelchair please continue receive the grace to continue receive the grace to keep praying receive the grace to keep speaking hallelujah someone can come to your family and say kai this is your family you will never change you people are just like this keep declaring with my eyes will i see the salvation of the lord surely there is an end my tomorrow is better than my today 
I will one day be called Beulah and Hephzibah. I am the planting of the Lord. A well watered garden. Thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads. We walk through water and through fire. But thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. The Lord is my light and salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? He won't stop. He won't stop. Till my life looks like him. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till I look just like him. I won't stop. I won't stop. Till I look just like him. I won't stop. I won't stop. Till I look just like him. Please sit down. Key number two, and then we'll pray. The first key that can cause remembrance towards you before God and before men is to not be weary in well-doing. Continue. Rewarded or not, continue. Commended or not, continue. Understood or not, continue. Number two, Isaiah 43, verse 26. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 43 and verse 26. Want to read Koinonia? Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. God is speaking. Put me. Lift up a cry from the earth to heaven and say, Lord, remember. Put me in remembrance. Put me in remembrance. Are you ready for one powerful scripture you should add to your library? If there are five scriptures in your library, let this be there. Ah! I found this scripture day before yesterday. I was meditating. It fired like an arrow from my head to my feet. I blasted in tongues. I said, that's right. You see, the Bible said the kingdom of God is like a man who lost his treasure. And you find candle and broom. You sweep it. When you find that, you rejoice. Numbers chapter 10, verse 9. Numbers 10, verse 9. Look up Koinonia and read it with faith in your heart. Ready? One to read. And if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppress you, then shall ye blow an alarm with the trumpet, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemy. I now know what they did in before Jericho. That when you stand and your enemies overwhelm you, lift up the trumpet is the power of praise. Oh, Shalis Kabarutasya. Lift up that trumpet. The word is Yada. Praise lifted with understanding. That when you see that you are encompassed by enemies and there is no way for victory when you pray in addition to that prayer put God in remembrance then don't disturb him again lift up your trumpet and begin to blast it like the priest that you are go around your Jericho while you blast the trumpet go around your Jericho while you blast the trumpet and the Bible says that sound that shofar will come before God as a memorial. This is scripture. See, let God be true and let every man be a liar. Hallelujah. Please take it higher for me. Look at this scripture. It says, you shall be remembered before the Lord when you lift up your trumpet I just saw a trumpet this is what I saw in the spirit like a sound a shofar 
So the Lord says, hear me, it's time to rise. And the spirit and this bride of his says, come. And you believe it. And you also say, come. Because you are the one that has heard. You hear that word. They heard the word, but the word did not profit them. Where did the word come from? From the spirit and the bride. But the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. In them that hearing has a lot to do with your receiving. You must hear. It's good to see, but you must also hear. And you must participate in the result as proof that you believe it. Are we together? Now, let me tell you the three main ways that God blesses. The general technology is that the spirit and the bride come. But all our solutions, please listen, all the solutions we search for come in only three dimensions. Number one, every solution that you seek, including that which you see tonight, will come by the ministry of the anointing. The ministry of the anointing. The ministry of the anointing. You can put there the supernatural. There are dimensions of the workings of God that require the supernatural straight up. Like the healing of infirmity. Someone is here now, for instance, maybe with cancer or maybe a problem. You don't need any counseling. There's no counseling there. You need the supernatural. Someone is here and things, you know, you need the hand of God directly. It's the first way. That the word becomes flesh. So that what is not suddenly becomes. Ah, and what is suddenly is. Just like that. Amazing miracles. Amazing miracles. A womb that is not becomes. Immediately. 
A womb that cannot receive child cannot receive seed because yesterday I was ministering in Abuja and I was so touched when a woman walked up to me and said, Apostle, you were here a few years ago and you ministered to me and you prophesied um, that I will get married and I'll have a child. And then I had a miscarriage the first time and I felt so bad. And then you returned, you prophesied that a child is a baby girl a baby girl. When I held that child, I was not holding a child. I was holding the word that has become that you may come here trusting God to increase your ministry and expand the reach, expand the demand upon your grace. There may be things to learn, but in the final amount, there is a level of power and grace that must rest upon you. And you will return back and marvel and wonder. It will look like you held a child and put it in your body. What manner of the workings of the spirit is this? Please believe the supernatural. The supernatural is not for Pentecostals. If you do not believe the supernatural, you, your life will be in trouble. It will be a compendium of pain. God can invade time and manipulate things. The anointing is the agency that he has allocated. Medicine has given us a glimpse of the way the anointing works. Watch this. If I have a boil, we have a lot of doctors here. If I have a boil and my leg is swollen, sometimes they may not need to do anything to the boil exactly. They will just give me a few drops with a dosage and say swallow it. Is that correct? And while I'm swallowing it, I don't speak to the drug and say, drug, please, make sure you don't go to my brain by mistake. This is where, no, no. Designed in that drug is the ability to find what is wrong. Once you swallow it, once it enters your system, it becomes compatible with all your organs. Your organs begin to align them. Ha! And you will watch something within days start going down, going down. Last week when I saw you, your leg was swollen. Where did that mass go to? It vanished. Do you expect God to be that slow? What then is the difference between him and men? Medicine is, is a fragrance of his mercy reaching earth. Like, like I, 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 I wear perfume. And when I pass, whatever your nose can receive, you enjoy it for that moment. But what if I gave you the bottle? No, 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 please, I don't downplay medicine, but I want you to understand this. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe the sick can be healed. I believe lives can change. I believe that what is not can become in the twinkling of an eye. I believe it. Otherwise, we are gathered here for a waste of time. I really believe it. Ah! I believe it. I believe that something that is missing can return back. Everything is alive. myself. I'm not just a recipient of miracles. I am a miracle. This man that stands before you is a real miracle. So I know about miracles. Please don't get used to faith. Don't get used to the hardness of it. Expect that God can invade history. Let me tell you a miracle that happened to me we were in Lagos for long, I knew them, and then I ministered, I ministered in the church that we always use the auditorium, and something strange happened. While I was counseling, a man came who, um, of course, I'm sure he could understand English, but he felt comfortable speaking in Yoruba. And he came and sat close to me and started talking in Yoruba, you know, just as if. And now he was an elderly man. This is something that happened last week. 
I didn't know. I said, now, how do I respectfully tell this man, sorry, sir, I'm not exactly Yoruba. And the guy was talking to me, and the next thing that happened was I started understanding exactly what he was saying. This is not a lie. The same way you preach and someone is interpreting. I was hearing what he was saying. Then I was responding to him in English. And then he would speak the first line. Speak the second line. We were done and I prayed for him. Immediately I, w- I finished praying for him. That was it. You, I will not be able to do anything again. Where have you kept God? Where have you kept God? Where have we rebuked the God of heaven? Please, listen, 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 listen. Man himself is a miracle. Everything happens on earth. It's just that we don't put our hand, we ponder. I believe in the supernatural. It is the way God looks at things. What is not seen is seen. That means it is possible for someone who has no business calling you to call you. Why should you wonder? It is the Lord's doing. Let it only be marvelous in your eyes. While you are listening to me, let the Holy Ghost speak to you. Take away the unbelief. Your wonder. Take away the unbelief. There is a God that speaks in tongues. That God is not a man. God is not an archangel. God is not Angel Michael. He's not a senior brother to the angel. He's the creator of the heavens. Are we together? The supernatural. A generation that does not believe the supernatural is a generation that will truly miss God experientially. We need to trust God for breaks. This is one of the benefits of things like praying in the spirit. He takes you out of this mundane realm of carnal, where we only be- believe that things must happen by science alone. No. There is a God in heaven. By this time tomorrow, he will be done with you. The rod of Aaron that did not have a root to the earth can still bring forth fruit. It is true. These have been my contemplations, so not just today. It's been in my heart. You can, you can see the pattern with which I'm communicating. A generation is losing the essence of the reality of the power of God. The ministry of the anointing is gradually being lost. And when I say the ministry of the anointing, I'm not talking of flying up and down, falling down. The ability to demonstrate the existence of God who speaks in the heaven. This has nothing to do with being an apostle or a prophet. It's how far God can reach for man. For I spoke a word. You have been called God. I don't know the song, but I like the song. Here's the part of the song I like. The supernatural is a demonstration of God's love. He knows that you already got born again at 40. When will you know God to become great? Already you are late. You are late already. So the dimension of his supernatural can bring mercy, can bring favor, jump, and accelerate your life. 
and push you forward. Otherwise, why is he God? Please believe what I'm saying. God knows that he called you into ministry. And he knows the people he's sending you to. He knows the stubbornness in their heart. That until they see miraculous signs, they won't come. So he, listen, he's not going to send you just with a sermon. No. How then will you demonstrate and defend what he sent you? Moses said, what will, who will I tell Pharaoh sent me? a generation that can believe the power of God. That when God says I can lift you, you believe it. When God says I can anoint you, you believe it. When God says I can turn your life around, you believe it. Please hear me. What more do you need to see to know that natural things don't count very much in this realm? You have to be outstanding by an agency that is not human. John 4, 48. Except ye see miraculous signs, you will not believe. Jesus himself said it. Except you see. There is a demonstration of the hand and the might of God that must rest upon us and rest upon our generation. Why will you write your prayer request if it will not be answered? Why should you travel I'm aware that some of us have been here, right? A number of people that I minister to in Abuja followed me here. There are people who have come from all over. There's a pastor, you're the one who came from Ukraine? From Ukraine, all the way. And for heaven's sake, why will you come and watch a man? Am I a, a comedian? This is not an amusement park. Oh, there is a God that sits in heaven. Please hear me. There is a God that sits in heaven that can speak, that can lift, that can turn a man's life around. Shake that unbelief. Shake that unbelief. Get it out of your life and believe that God is able to turn a man's life around. Holy the major thing that I know God is going to be doing tonight is healing the sick. There are mysterious diseases that are coming and lashing upon people. You see people dying for diseases and sicknesses with no name. It's, it's like headache, but it's not headache. It's like chest pain, but it's not chest pain. It's like asthma, but it's not asthma. It's like a lump, but it's not a lump. It's like a growth, but it's not a growth. Whatever it is, we know it's an oppression of the devil. Please sit down. Let me finish up and then we'll pray. So by the ministry of the anointing, number two, how blessings manifest. The second dimension is by the impartation of wisdom and understanding. The second way that the word becomes flesh is that the Lord by his spirit will impart upon a man the spirit of wisdom and understanding. There are certain results that don't need the supernatural as it were. They just need an awareness of the laws of God and the quality to work through in accordance with those things that are there. dimensions that doesn't just need an event. The power of God is calling on two people outside. Two people outside. Please listen to me. Two people outside. I cannot be 
Hashem and to the very nice people of Shemadi, the great knowledge of his Hashem. Please bring them in. Just listen to the word the Lord will do a good work through people. I feel like rain. The rain of the spirit is about to be drenched. The Lord is saying, I'm shifting you, both of you, that you are entering a dimension of the favor of God. This is what I'm seeing. You came here to contact the grace that will bring you into a strange realm of favor. And I declare by the spirit of grace that everything that is not of the Christ over your lives and destiny this is miracle service. It must bow to the name and the Lordship of Jesus. No shadow you will slide up. Mountain you will climb up. Coming up. three and then we'll pray. The third way that the word becomes flesh that possibilities get to you is through the ministry of men. 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 Men are God's conduit. They communicate possibilities. Most of the favor that you need is already in the hands of a man. You need the ministry of men. I don't just mean the prophetic ministry of men. You need the giving ministry of men. You need the lifting ministry of men. You need the endorsing ministry of men. expectations be high. God will not disappoint you. The word becomes flesh. The word becomes a testimony when the anointing of the Holy Spirit tests upon that situation. The word becomes a testimony when you are given spiritual illumination, wisdom, understanding, the fortitude to comprehend spiritual things, then the word becomes flesh. When men are introduced in your life, men are carriers of possibility, not just spiritual possibility. There are men that have the wealth to give you. There are men that have the endorsement, the leverage, their credibility is an asset. They can bring it upon your life and turn your life Everything that we speak for in this place tonight comes under this three categories. There are matters that only the anointing can solve tonight. There are matters that the quickening of the spirit, providing illumination, will channel you to solve. But there are things that men, 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 given by God, 
Listen, when the man at Gate Beauty Show met Peter and John, he didn't say, God as in is in heaven. He said, God as I am. There are things men have. Please hear me. There are things that men have. And they can give it. There are things that men have. And they can give it. A man can have a car and give you the key to the car. A man can have, but you see, the things that men have, real blessings cannot be given to you. When a man gives you anything physical, it's not really a blessing. It's just a donation. Real blessings are spiritual. All the sons of Abraham, he gave them physical gifts. But to Isaac, he gave him the greater gift. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are going to do a gift work tonight. But I trust God to heal the sick. This, 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 there is a grace today to, to damage all kinds of infirmities. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible said he went about doing good and healing all, healing all, they that were oppressed of the devil. Tonight, he will lift up that report, that prayer that stands before the God of heaven. There are many of us here, I believe, who are in ministry. We may not exactly have means. Tonight is also a night of impartation. Listen, an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. It can be transferred. You can carry something back that you did not come with. You can carry a grace that while you were in the car coming, it was not yet in your life. And your results will show what has been introduced in your life. Are we together? Please rise up, lift up your voice in one minute. And declare, Lord, I believe. I believe. I'm a believer tonight. Everywhere, outside, inside. Pray. Diligently seek him. The rewarder, the healer, the lifter. I want to pray. Please listen. Listen. Please don't get used to the ritual of what is done here. It is not just a ritual. You pray, have people fall under the anointing. Be sensitive to what God is doing everywhere. But be sensitive to what he's doing in you, around you. Be sensitive to the graces you are receiving. Be sensitive to the prophecy that is coming upon you. Be sensitive to the things that are changing. sensitive to the mantles that are resting upon you. Be sensitive to what is happening. Be sensitive to the speakings of the Spirit. So I, I don't want you to get used to the, the, the ritual Oh, you are about to see people in front. No, 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 no. Let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven. And he's the lifter of men. Please hear me. You are a visitor here coming. You are welcome. We'll acknowledge you later on. But please, insist that you did not waste your time to come for nothing. Please, I know you have heard. And I know you came for an experience. Many of us have inconvenienced ourselves. Not under the best of conditions to be here. Please don't waste your stay. Let your heart be open to carry something tangible.
Hallelujah. Satan is behind many predicaments of our lives. Satan is behind many of the ills that continue to happen. Please let me have your attention because I want to pray now. And the power of God, listen to me. As I begin to pray, there are people here. You see, God may not necessarily, don't worry, it's okay. Excuse me, that's all right. Take it easy. There are people here who are sincere people, even believers. But your life has just been in under a great influence of the operation of darkness. The Bible says many things happen in my sight. And one of it is that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Please, I like you to believe. This is no ordinary prayer. Remember, it is the king that the bride that is talking. You are only seeing the bride, but it's the spirit and the bride. I'm about to pray, and I want you to sleep deep. Because everything that does not represent Christ must go today, now. A few weeks ago, I had an encounter. And the Holy Spirit told me, you are about to experience a new lift in your authority in the spirit. Listen. This is the first time I'll be sharing it. And I saw, every time I see it, this is what I see. I see like a badge in the spirit, a promotion. And the, the Lord said, I will put power upon your lips in another dimension that as you declare, you will see it happen. If this thing is a grace, it's a grace. It is not every time a man declares with power. There are times that you declare with authority. It's an office. Let me pray. Thank you, Jesus. There is a very serious deliverance that is about to happen. And please, I want you to bring the people in front. I'm seeing yokes. I'm telling you, I'm seeing real bondage. God has anointed this place to be a place of liberty. Right now, I declare by the spirit of the tribe. And I decree and declare tabaru that in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, I want you to shout that name that is above every other name. And except God is not God, any planting that is not of the Christ over your life and your destiny, I speak by the grace of God Almighty that He must let you go. Now, one, two, three, shout Jesus. Bring them out. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I command devils. I command spirits, yokes that have tied down the destinies of men. Be gone now by the spirit of the Christ. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. Go now. Release every destiny. 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 I decree and declare. The Bible says even the captives, the lawful captives shall be delivered. Therefore I declare that every legal access upon which the devil is holding on to anyone's destiny right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost be delivered now 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 I 
I command closed doors be open. Closed doors be open. Right now, be open. Closed by the hand of darkness. I declare be open. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. is showing me change over people's heads. I decree and declare, anyone here under any kind of yoke, at the count of three, inside, outside, online, I want you to shout that name again. It's not a ritual done out of unbelief. There is force and power in the name. One, two, three. Every orchestration, go now. Be loose now. Be loose now. In the name of Jesus, be loose. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. The Lord is showing me people who have been at the same level for many years. There is nothing you do in time that moves you forward. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing fire just rising from my limbs. I'm about to pray that prayer. Anyone who has been kept at the same position right now by the anointing of the Spirit, I declare that limitation broken now. Broken now. Help them. Broken now. Broken now. Broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Right away, I want to pray against barrenness. I'm sensing the grace. Don't wait till you are married. If there is anyone here by the Spirit of God, by whatever means, your womb has been closed by the authority of heaven. I declare right now, I'm seeing the anointing coming on a number of people. Married or unmarried. Let that womb be open now. Be open now. Be open now. I tell you, the anointing of God is coming on people. Whether you are married or not, some of you are standing in for your loved ones. I declare again, womb, be open now. Be open now. Be open now. open now I command every devil ah, I'm seeing such I'm still seeing people's feet tied like a chain around the feet of people right now I decree and declare every chain makatos kabarakata holding anyone now in the name of Jesus I break those chains now 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 hallelujah if you have any abdominal pain lay your hands right now lay your hands just on your stomach any kind of abdominal pain doesn't matter whether it's a fibroid doesn't matter whatever just lay your hands here right now in the name that is above all names i decree and declare right now the anointing of the holy ghost is coming upon your stomach area and in the name of jesus let there be a miracle right now 
Let there be a miracle right now. I'm seeing a number in the realm of the spirit 21. And the Lord is saying an anointing is coming on those people. And that grace is for direction. You are at a point in your life where you are confused. You honestly don't know what to do. But right now I stretch my hand, 21. I see it in the realm of the spirit. Right now let the anointing of the spirit bring in direction, ending confusion. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Direction, direction, direction in ministry, direction in business, direction, geographic direction. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for speed. I'm going to continue praying for speed until I see it manifest. Now, please hear me. Because of what happens when I pray for speed, the ushers are limited. Make sure that you protect anyone because people will start running up and down. That grace for speed must find expression. I will continue to pray it until you leave your current level. I stretch my hand by the privilege of God's grace and I declare, I don't know what has caused delay, but the mantle that commands speed right now at the count of three, Koinonia, hear me. One, two, three, receive speed. Speed, speed, speed in your destiny. Speed. Do in one month. What one year could not do, do in one month. What five years could not do, do in one month. In the name of Jesus. trying to conserve time. There is a lot to do. Who is Zenith? I'm hearing a name, Zenith. 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 All those who are in front under the anointing here, I command the devils that have oppressed you. This is the house of God. Right now at the count of three, release them. Release everything you have tied down. One, two, three. Go. Go now. Every strange spirit Go now. Go now. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Zenith. I'm hearing a name, Zenith. Hold on. Please don't, don't be rowdy. Just relax. Stand up, my dear. That lady on green, stand up. Where are you coming from? Huh? You are from Kaduna State. Relax, calm down. I want to pray for you. Listen, God is not just calling names at random. I want to pray for you. You can expect that there will be so many Zeneths. The power of God is coming on one of you right now. One of you, has a, I'm seeing an anointing coming on one of you right now. It's, it's not something you can stand. The power of God we are going to have to do a sick work because we want to take out time and minister to the sick. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. There's one of you, the anointing of the spirit. Let's just walk that instruction first. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare on all of you. I may not have time to prophesy one by one, but every barrier that stands between you and the next level, I declare, let it go now. I cut it by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power of God is coming on a lady. Just where this, my brothers, are standing. Bring that person. Just this row. I'm seeing a cloud. Just right here. Right now as I'm speaking. The anointing of the Spirit is coming on one person there. Please bring the person. It's a lady. Bring her. 
Janet, I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. This is an instruction God is giving me. There is a family. I'm seeing the family. It's a whole pattern. Nobody married. No matter what happens. I'm about to pray. The power of God is coming on that one person for the sake of the family. Please, I want you to believe and receive. I declare that marital delay. This is the instruction God is giving me. Break now. Break now. Break now. Break now. The Lord is opening my eyes. And in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing the map of Benway State. An anointing is coming right now on Benway. God is bringing a miracle. I release my, I stretch my hands and I declare a miracle right now. It's a sign and a wonder how God does it. Benway State, Benway State, Benway State. I curse the workings of darkness over that territory. In the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. The Lord is taking me to a neighboring state. I'm literally seeing myself in Kogi state. And the Lord is saying he's breaking witchcraft. I don't know who are those who are from there. But I stretch my hands. Kogi state. May that anointing come upon anyone associated with that territory. That is under the yoke of bondage. Be free now. Be free now. Kogi state. Be free now. Be free now. God does these things that men will fear him. My sister, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Something is leaving you. This is what I'm seeing. For you and for your family members. Let that devil never return to you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. I'm hearing a name, Agnes. Prophecy takes a lot of time. So we'll just minimize it so that I'm hearing the name Agnes. 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 I'm hearing that name. Please very quickly because I want to take out time and God is visiting three families at overflow two. Overflow two, the overflow by the roadside. I just saw an anointing, just like fire. Three families, three families by the spirit of the living God. Agnes, who is Agnes? You are Agnes. You are Agnes, your sister. here for your sister. You are here for yourself. Talk. Hold my hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, this spirit must let you go. There is a very violent spirit that, that is attempting to take advantage of this lady's life. I declare now by the spirit of God, 
the covenant and the ordinance that authorizes you in the life of this lady comes under judgment now. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that violent devil must let you go now even by the spirit of the... There is no hiding place. In the name of Jesus, there is no hiding place for the unfruitful works of darkness. I curse you by the God of heaven and I declare you must let her go alongside everything you have planted in her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just hold her there. I'm going to hold your hand. It's a great mystery. I'm going to hold your hand for the person who will fall is of this room. Bring the person for me. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare, just don't worry, look at the room. The person who will fall is not this lady, in this room, in this room, right in the back. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare by the spirit of the living God, that everything that does not name the name of Christ, right now I command it must go. In the name of Jesus Christ, it must go by the grace of God. I set you free, my dear. In the name of Jesus, let me pray for you. Father, there is... Please don't be embarrassed. We may not prophesy to everyone. But there is a woman here. Don't be embarrassed. You just had a miscarriage. Usually I would not ask you to come, but the Lord is asking to come out. Who is that person? a Yoruba family that is under a very strange attack. Under a strange attack. I'm praying right now. I don't know where they are, but I'm going to pray for you by the Spirit. Please don't confuse the places so that I can minister to them. In the name of Jesus, I pray for that family. It's a Yoruba family from Kwara State. Yoruba family from Kwara State. I'm seeing it by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. That family is here or anyone who represents that family, I declare freedom right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, my dear, that everything that is not the planting of the Lord, the hand of God is upon you. And the Lord is saying in the seasons that come, you are going to start having visitations. There is a visitation that God is bringing. And that visitation is preparing you for where he is taking you to. And the Lord is saying that you be faithful. In the name of Jesus, I declare it so, even by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you step into that level and that dimension. You are the woman with the miscarriage. You are married. Please don't feel, I hope you are not embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed, huh? Because that's the same way you will come here and testify. Listen, God is not going to embarrass you for nothing. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. This is one big family and they are intelligent people. We will never come and just embarrass someone like that. If there's anything that looks embarrassing, just know that these things are spiritual. My dear, that young lady, go. Come, lift your hands. God is not done with you yet. Huh? This is, this is good. I bless this girl and all that. Probably just born in a jar. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare, take what is good in her dream life. Let it leave her. Take what you put inside her through the dream. Is that it? Please don't feel embarrassed. It's okay. Did I pray for you? Did I pray for you so that Okay, just go back. My dear, put your hands on your head. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go and return with your child according to the time of life. No more miscarriage whatsoever. In the name of Jesus, you will return with child according to the time of life. In the name
name of Jesus, Father. And as we pray to our Father, in the name of Jesus, we come with fire. We come with fire. In the name of Jesus, Father. If there is someone here, they are in ministry. I met them this morning from the office. But I'm still, and I meant it, some of you, this is for your ministry. There is a level of excitement that they have been praying for, and God is about to answer that prayer. I stretch my hand. I don't know where that person is. But in the name that is above all names, may that anointing, like a mighty rushing wind, in the name of Jesus, There's someone here, God, this night is giving you a ministry to teenagers. An anointing is coming on you. Your ministry will be to teenagers. I don't know where that person is, but Lord, I stretch my hand. Right now, may that mantle shine the person. In the name of Jesus, I birth that ministry by the Spirit. I birth that ministry by the hand of God. Inside here, outside, I declare, in the name of Jesus, let there be a birthing. I draw from the bowels of prophecy and I declare that ministry is better tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Your sister and you, why is she here? Miss Karen, are you married? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus, place your hand. I agree with you. Every plague of Miss Karen goes now. In the name of Jesus Christ, according to the time of life, return with your child. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your sister, where is she? Abuja, tell her that she was prayed for and she should expect a miracle. In the name of Jesus, I declare, you're standing in for her, but I declare the power of God is upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are four people who are receiving the mantle for prayer and intercession. Now, I know that it's, it's, a, it's a grace we will all desire, but there are four exact people. Four exact people, some inside, some outside. Lord, I don't know where they are, but that grace, a dimension of the intercessory ministry, capacity to prevail by the Spirit, In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why is she here? Come. Where are you from? God is doing with Miss Mother Miss Karen will make a lot for her family because I'm still seeing the office. Is she here? Where is she? Esther, speak now. Come on here. How are you, my friend? Okay, God is about to change your life. I don't know you. What do you do, sir? This is where your money is. This is where the grace of God is. If you hear what I'm telling you. You see, sometimes God will not violate your will. You can choose to do anything you do. But because of the openness of your heart, he will give you direction. The Lord is my shepherd, he says. I shall not want. So when God directs you, he will take away that particular responsibility. And that's why I said, this is more than just the issue of marriage. Or whatever it is. He will pray for you. Madam, I want you to stop joking. Breathe. Breathe. 
Ramadan, as you pray for you, God help you don't fear them. But there are things that are upon you. The blood of the prophet can also pray for you. Give the one in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, this is the last August and September. By October, by July, your life will change. Do you know what just entered you? You didn't just fall under the anointing. It is an agenda. The realm of the spirit wants to touch you to bring you to those realms. Don't worry, I'm going to pray for you. It's the grace of Jesus that blinds you. Amen. And I declare and I prophesy over you by the spirit of God. These three months, may your life change in a way that will surprise you. Name of Jesus Christ, Madam, put your hand in your on your stomach. According to the time of life, huh? In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm seeing something like a rope being loosed from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus, listen. You will come with your wife and stand here. Look at their faces and remember them, so that the day they come and stand. It's, it's not to glorify a man. It is to show that God, oh, God is still alive. Huh? I lose this in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will return with a strange miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Sir, can I talk to you, please? This is your turn. Where are you coming from, sir? to pray for you. Three things. Number one, I want to pray that Christians will not take this for granted. I'm not a prophet of doom. This is our, our prophet. I want to pray for you. That's number one. Number two, I want to pray for you that everything that is yours that has not been released, let it come to you. Does it make sense what I'm telling you? I will pray for you. This is one of the reasons why you are here. I want to pray. It will surprise you the way God will release all kinds of financial blessings to come to you. And then number three, there is a man from Lagos that God is going to connect you with. God is going to use that man to bring your life around. I don't know what you do, but please, I want you to mark me. But the most important prophecy is Ephraim. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing that this thing is about to happen. You start one morning, you just stand up, and they will say you are behaving as if you are talking to yourself and you are having a mirror. Because the devil is in play. Madam, come. God is about to change your life. Because you are praying and you are saying God should tell me to speak to you. Is that true? Stand here. I'm, I'm standing here and I'm hearing your prayer. And you are saying the Lord should, that I should visit you. That you did not come from far for nothing. Where did you come from? Stop. Where are the other two people? We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. Yahweh. Sir, I congratulate you in the name of Jesus because your life will change in a very remarkable way. Madam, I want to pray for you. Look at me. Stand up, my friend. Why by the last year? Please, please. Madam, I want to pray for you. You see, ba, when prophecy is used well, I'm seeing this woman, your right breast. Huh? If I don't pray for you, you're going to start having what looks like a growth. And it will later become cancer. 
because I'm looking at this woman. No, don't worry, madam. I'm, don't be afraid. I'm looking at this woman on the bed and just one. And they say, what is this? What happened to this woman? Madam, you did not leave Adamawa State to come here to waste your time. No. I vowed a vow and prayed a prayer that never should there be a time when I will have the opportunity to minister. And the people say, oh, it was just like before. Never, 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 never. That every one encounter will leave a deposit of God in your life. Hallelujah. Sir, I want to pray for you. Is, where is she coming from? Adam Awasu. I need to pray. There is bad luck in your life. And you're a very nice man, but hey, please stand up. Please stand up. I Don't cry. You see, but let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, sometimes people are carrying pain. You just see people laugh and praise the Lord. That, that is a dance of faith. It's just a, a joy of faith because I'm looking at this man. You will not believe what this man has gone through. Is that true? What do you do, sir? Washing with his hands. This is what I'm saying. This man, this man is supposed to be connected to a politician in Adamawa State. This is this man's destiny based on what the Lord is showing me. His name is Zechariah. This is what I'm telling you. Just listen. Let me prophesy to you. I'm seeing that this man's destiny is supposed to be with a member. And yet he's doing, now I'm not saying laundry is an insult, but the way he's doing it, this is not a blessing. Um, I don't know what happened. Somebody told you huh, that they can use you to kill him. And that he has, it's not only you. I'm not a, pro, don't go around fighting anybody, huh? That this man one day will kill you. They were saying, honorable Koyanko, be careful. Don't allow people to just come around you like that who already know you. Because the enemy within is outside. That's why he lost relationship with you and cut everything off. You see, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, God reveals this thing to tell you, this world you live in is not a playground. If you don't sustain spiritual intelligence, look at how, may your enemies not get to the gate before you. That the counsel of Ahitophel can turn a man's destiny and this man it's not that he's using a laundry, washing clothes like it, like an animal. Sir, you have come here for God to change your life. And I'm praying for you by the God of heaven, the one who put this miracle service together. Let things change now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I declare favor upon your life. Let things turn around in the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, what do you want God to do for you? English, how to speak anyone? I will pray the Lord's prayer of my body. I will pray for I you. Want my children. Oh, heal me. You have female children. I have two. And you I want a male. That's what, and there's a reason why I shifted the mic. I don't want to just say what you're about to say live, huh? Because one day your husband will be praying. He will hear this, this miracle service from you. So, I want to pray for you. You see, please let me advise them. It's God that picks children. And, and I don't mean to insult anyone, but please, let's be careful. This issue of give me male children, give me female children, otherwise you are not good. I mean, it's even better to come to a man of God to pray for you than to antagonize your wife or husband. There is a culture of the kingdom. Listen, when we get born again, the value, the value system of the kingdom, the spirit life must be at work in us. In as much as I know sincerely that it is beneficial to have children, male and female. When our people are getting married, I pray for them that God will give them children, male and female. But you cannot antagonize your wife 
or your husband has been giving you um, uh, male children, female children. Of course, I understand that I'm, I'm an African. Because of issues of inheritance and other things, but we have to be careful. Whatever God has not given you, you cannot have it. And if you go to the devil to have it, let me tell you, the consequence will be waiting for you. Are we together? Madam, look at me. Do you believe if I pray for you, you will come here with a male child? Yes, sir. <laughs> Madam, what did you see me doing for you in a dream? Listen, number one, number one, God is bringing favor to your life. Number two, you will stand on this very altar with a male child. I want you to believe it. You believe that? Hold my hands. Father, please turn the life of this woman in the name of Jesus. Let it please you to open her womb and give her a male child. And we agree, we receive that your husband is born again. And he's walking in the ways of God. In the name of Jesus. Madam, the Lord is going to connect you with some, a woman from Maiduguri. Where are you from? Okay, I'm going to pray for you. A, a woman, she does textile and clothing, tire cloth. This woman will bless you in a way that it will look like it's a child. Believe what I'm telling you. Father, I decree and declare supplying these people by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I bless you. God changed your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Mama, that mama with blue, come. Who came from Kano? From where? Air Force Base. This is your husband. What do you want God to do for him? Don't cry. You know, I preached a message here and I said God can do it. I didn't know that. Since 2005, no child. Everything has gone. Madam, stand up. Please, if you are in ministry here, hear me. Reduce your public life. Go back to the secret place and get real power. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Let me repeat it, please. If you are in ministry, I say this, please. Reduce public life. Watching football. Going for marriages that you don't have any business. We, I'm not saying you should not honor people. But the times that we are living in now, the problems on people, it's not just sermons. People are in real trouble. We must trust God for grace to stay in the spirit until you get something genuine that can solve people's problems. 2005, how many years is that? 14 years, no child, her period ceased completely, the devil sat on it. Let me see how you will have a child. Madam, don't cry, it's okay. I don't know you, I've never seen you. You can see, how will you be sitting there and then God will just call you. I want to pray for you. Madam, please hear me. I'm saying it in the open. I didn't say it in your ear. I want you to go and prepare. Huh? I'm seeing. Where is your husband? Anybody who wants to come and destroy your family by giving you something to drink, eh? In the name of Temeko, I, I, I banish them far. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing a man, I'm not. I love the body of Christ, but I'm seeing someone come supposedly a prophet, but what this man is doing is not prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying? Six months now. The only one Six months? Yes. He has gone away. He, he just came. I, I went to his office. He said that I'm coming to Kenya and things. So he now said, uh, he said, uh, he just came back. 
You are not divorced from the Azure girl. She, she just went, but you are not divorced. Okay, she's saying that I'm a virgin. But then when she sees me, okay, it's just sex and it's not sex. It may not, don't, don't be too quick to judge the man. See, let me tell you this. You see, Ba, when people go through things, be careful. When you are about to stress, people are calling, people are calling. Remember that stability is according to the measure of your objective will still go up. And there are times that even the stone gets pushed to the wall. So don't be too quick. You are a people of love. Don't come there and start thinking and saying, especially if you know the woman, and think the husband is doing it. We are not here to say who is right or who is wrong. We are here to say that there is a God in heaven. Are we together? Madam Hosea, I command this spirit in the name that is above all names to release your womb in the name of Jesus. Madam, I speak to you. First, may God reconcile you back to your husband. Second, you will take in according to the time of life. Your baby will stay and you will return back to the child. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every orchestration that is not of God to keep you barren and to destroy your marriage, I cut it now in Jesus' name. See, anyone here, I'm, I'm praying for the ladies now, then we'll pray for the sick man and stuff. But no, you don't have to come out. But you are here, the moment you start a relationship with a guy, it becomes serious. And just when he's deciding to do anything marriage, it must scatter. You continue to enter relationships, relationships, loving and unloving, loving and unloving. Today you are in love, tomorrow nonsense manufactures itself. I'm praying right now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit because it's a yoke that must be destroyed. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, inside and outside, anyone who is under that category by the God of heaven, let the power of God come on you now to end that captivity. Let the power of God come on you now to end that captivity. You see, please give this woman her token of appreciation. God bless her. You have to pray. Um, the Lord is asking me, we are praying. I, I hope I'm not boring you. I'm not wasting your time. The Lord is showing me a family here. I may not ask you to come out. But in this family, you never settle maritally, but you will have children. No matter how you go around it, you find out that you have children out of marriage, out of, and, and it's not like the men will be there to take responsibility and take care of the children. The Lord wants to deliver that family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ah. came out from her nose. Don't worry. Yeah, she, she, she cried because of her pain. It's possible she's part of that family. But I'm going to pray. Whether you know it or not, you see the thing about the anointing, I told you, sometimes God locates people distinctly just to talk to them, to encourage and build their faith. But it doesn't matter where you are. I want to pray now that, that you cannot get married happily with a ring and settle down and have children. But the devil will manipulate that you will continue to have children. I pray right now. I don't know where they are. But in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. That yoke is destroyed now. Yeah, look at me. Come. It's your season of laughter. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. You see, let me tell you. For all the pain that you've gone through, I want you to hear me. God himself is turning your life around. Because let me remind you, even as he has reminded you, that it's faith without Jesus. Sometimes you will look foolish while you are doing it. Let me encourage someone here. It's faith without Jesus. 
It may not look like you will come every day, but the day you come, it will come with dignity and honor and lift you in a way that whoever has laughed at you will have to bend their head in shame. I'm praying for you. Hold my hand. Father, in Jesus' name, confirm your word. You have said that it's a season of laughter. I call it so and I declare that everything that stands as a blockade to your joy and laughter leaves your way now. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Someone will run out under the anointing. Hold the person and bring the person up. That will be the last prophecy. The power of God is coming on someone. It's not something you can control. By the anointing, you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Please, when that happens, bring the person. I need to speak to the person and then we'll pray for the sick right now. It's a very strange anointing and you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Meanwhile, let this lady talk. My dear, hold my hand. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus. I'm rebuking something you don't know anything about. But in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, this goes now over by the grace of God. There are two ladies here. Only married men look for you. A, a responsible, godly gentleman will never seem to be interested in you. But when you find a married man, sometimes with children, that's the one that will come to you. I'm praying. I know there may be many people, but these are two people in the name that is above all names. I declare right now, whatever is on you that continues to compel married men, in the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit now. I curse so, something is burning here. I curse that spirit now. I curse that devil now. In the name of Jesus Christ. embarrassed but I feel the spirit of lust on this lady. I stretch my hand. Let that devil lead you now. That a man cannot come and pass this lady quietly and successfully. There's something that must continue to draw in the name of Jesus by the spirit of the living God. I curse that spirit and I declare it must let you go now. It must release you now by the God of heaven I declare. Be free from that spirit right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray for the sick. Our time is done, but we have to do this very fast. And like I said, please, please listen. All the people who will be praying for you, I just want you to believe. Um, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three. If you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, please not standing for anybody. And aside from those who are prayed for, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, then join the prayer line here. I want to pray for you myself. Just the fruit of the womb. Are we together? Now, of course, all who are here, you can come for your normal prayer. But particularly, if you, are, if you came here trusting God for the fruit of the womb, this, this fruit of the womb issue is becoming a serious issue. And we need to deal with it once and for all. Now, we are going to do this fast. All the people ministering to you will do it very, very fast and pray for you. While you are doing that, please, how many of us came with our prayer request? For those of us who are visitors, there's still room for you. You can quickly pen down your request and wave it. Ushers will be moving around to collect PR. Please help them and let's just make this very fast and make this snappy. But overflow one, um, overflow two. Overflow three, and then the overflow from the building right to second equa and down. Let's call that overflow four. Okay, okay, there is there is overflow two B, then there is overflow four. Please listen. This is overflow one, this is overflow two, 
there is overflow to be from this place right to the roadside, second echo down, then there's overflow four. Just from the gate of overflow three, then we have overflow three, the main building, and then online. Please make your way, come out and stand according to those various overflows. There will be people there to minister to you right now. We'll do it very fast. Our time is done. Please submit your prayer request. I'll be laying hands on all of them here right now. You can just wave them. There will be someone by your side. We apologize for those of you standing because your seats were spoiled. You will soon have it back and then be back to your seats. If there are visitors, some of you who are members, clear the way for them. They can sit down temporarily, please. If you are here, you are part of us, you can allow them to sit on your seat pending when they are fit to be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. the Lord. Please rise up on your feet. Thank you for your patience. Stretch your hands to this request. Please, if there are still requests um, that are not here, let's have them here very quickly so that we can pray. Please understand that this is not a ritual. God really answers prayers. There is a God in heaven who is in this service. This is a prophetic representation of our pain, our expectations. There may not be time to speak to everyone. There may not be time to minister to everyone as we would want to. But then I want us to agree right now. Stretch your hands and begin to pray in the spirit. As I lay my hands upon this request, we are declaring that every request here must be turned into a testimony. Stretch your hands and believe. We are declaring God is answering prayers now. Hallelujah. I stand upon with my bare foot on this prayer request and I declare by the Spirit of God. Even as God has instructed me, I declare that every request here by the Spirit of grace, let it be turned into your testimony. That in the name of that is above all names. There are, hold on please. There are people here. This is a death sentence. 
There are people here. This is an impossible situation. There are people here. God will, the person God will talk to is hard. But I pray, what looks impossible? I bow my knees to the God of heaven. The one who honors me when I pray. And I convert every request here to a testimony this night. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I decree and I declare by the spirit of faith that by this time next month you return here rejoicing. Please don't let the devil lie to you and say it will be as it has always been. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Every anointing that must be released towards your direction for this prayer to be answered, we release it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every pattern that is not just an individual, but it's a pattern that is written here. As God is visiting you here, every other person connected to you whose request you have written here we command a miracle for them where they are in the name of jesus christ there are situations here that need the blood i declare by the mystery of the blood there are three that bear witness in the heavens the father the word and the spirit there are three that bear witness in the earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. In the name of the Lord God of heaven, by the mystery of the blood of the eternal covenant, we cancel every ordinance that sponsors continuity of this request. In the name of Jesus. And the king could not sleep in the night. And he said, bring me the chronicles. And he saw there written what Mordecai did. Whoever must remember you for this request to be granted. By the God of heaven, we open the book of remembrance tonight. Any man holding what belongs to you, which is the reason why you are writing anything here. We put pressure on them to release it now. Every family here wept in shame and reproach. It looks like there is no dignity. The speakings of God does not seem to find expression here. I agree with you tonight by the God of heaven. Please help those under the anointing. That by the power of the Holy Ghost, shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Therefore, I decree and declare that these Egyptians you have dropped here, by the God of heaven, may you see them no more forever. May you see them no more forever. The same way I stand upon this request, I command that you stand upon every challenge in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I speak over your life. The doors that have followed you here closed in the name of Jesus. Please believe. Let your don't be distracted. Focus on the word of God in the name of Jesus. I command those doors be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Every grounded ministry here, every grounded business, every grounded family, hear the word of the Lord. I command and I declare, come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life.
every helper assigned from God who has not yet paid attention to you and what you request. I stand by the God of heaven and in the name of Jesus, I compel them to attend to your matters. I compel them to attend to your matter. I compel them to attend to your matter. Everything that should have happened and has not yet happened, according to the program of God, you know you should have entered that level and you are not there. By prophecy, I push you to that level. By prophecy, I push you to that level. Listen. You see, let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm not just speaking. I'm placing something upon your life. You may not see it, but you leave this place and watch what happens to you. Then you will see things turn around. Let me pray for you. The kind of favor that must bring acceleration to your life. Please receive this one. In the name that is above all names, May that mantle like a cloak, Zakata Pakatos, the Breketos Kabaruta, a Brekete Gotosho Pakata, Kratosho Deskaparata, take favor, take favor, carry favor, carry favor in the name of Jesus. Every area you have struggled in your life, you have done what you know to do. In the name of Jesus, I declare that that struggle comes to end now. Now please listen. The anointing your destiny needs for this season. Please listen. Every season has a grace requirement. Every season. There are doors that don't just open because you stand in front of them. Yesterday's anointing will not move you to tomorrow's place. I pray for you. This is an impartation. Wherever you are, I declare like the dew of heaven, the kind of grace you must carry for this season. Let it land on your destiny now. By this anointing, I forbid you from being ignored. In the name of Jesus Christ, I forbid you from being ignored. I forbid you from being trivialized. No man will look down on you. They came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him. The things that must be done through your hands in this season, for it to be said, this is the Lord's doing. As you are lifting your hands, may a fresh unction from heaven come upon those hands for exploits. Anyone in ministry here, I declare over you, go back to your various assemblies and platforms let there be fire on your altar fire on your altar fire on the ministrations let the gifts of the spirit work powerfully in the name of jesus we're rounding up let's pray over our finances this issue of finance is bringing many people to their knees, bringing many families to their knees, distracting people. The time we should spend on the things of the kingdom while focusing on money, what to eat, what to wear, house rent, building projects. It is not the will of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Ebenezer, the helper of men, I declare this month, even beginning from today, receive strange financial help. Receive strange financial help. In the name of Jesus, 
I prophesy to you strange financial help. Everyone under the sound of my voice trusting God for an honorable job. Listen, there are jobs that don't have honor. They are time wasters. They are devourers. I pray for you. The kind of job that represents dignity, that will honor you and help you to build your home well. May the God of heaven give you such a job. Let me pray for your spiritual life. If you have cars, you have houses, and your spiritual life is not on fire, you are not doing well. The first index to measure prosperity in the kingdom is the health of your spiritual life. That your prayer like fire, word like fire, fellowship with the spirit, fire. No room for up today, down tomorrow. I pray for you, fresh fire upon your prayer life. 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 Every lukewarmness, slumber, gluttony, these spirits that destroy your spiritual fervency, I declare in the name of Jesus, receive victory over them. The grace that can keep a man in the presence of God, the, the staying power that you can stay with the word, stay in prayer, not rush in and rush out and one power. God is not a magician. I pray for you. The unction to stay. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Every dimension in the spirit that is supposed to have been activated. There are some of you now. Listen. There are levels of graces you should have left. Sincerely. There are dimensions of power. There are haziness. Certain dimensions of haziness in your spiritual perception. There is a level of authority. There is an office you should be sitting on now. But it's not yet there. I pray for you. The mantle that will shift you to that level. May that grace come upon you now. The mantle that will shift you to that level. Makatoska barakato. May that grace come upon you now. Listen. Everything in your life that has refused to grow. God gave you a ministry that has refused to grow. No membership, nobody is placing a demand on your grace. God gave you a business, it has refused to grow. No increase, no impact. Anything that is alive grows. Whatever has stopped growth in your life, I bring that thing to an end now. Yeah. Finally, let me pray, please. The spirit of insanity. I told you that this is, this is, I came to pray and rebuke that spirit because that spirit, like the angel of death, is moving over families. Attacking children, attacking all kinds of people. Headache will just kill a man for nothing. Qatar, and they will say it's cancer. Pain around your breast, they will say you have a malignant, a tumor. See, let me tell you, whatever you don't fight to victory will remain in your life. Challenges are not the issue. But that you stand and fight the good fight of faith until you see what God said. If you have not seen what God said, don't stop. I pray for you. The spirit of a warrior, the grace that will cause you to refuse to allow things that are not the will of God. May that grace rest upon you now. As a body of believers, we agree that the spirit of infirmity first over this family, number two over this territory, and number three over the body of Christ. Thou spirit of infirmity, we banish your operation now. Thou 
thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day, nor the noisome pestilence, the destruction that wasted at noonday, the spirit of death. If there is anyone here that death is looming around the corridors of your life, or your loved ones, or those connected to you spiritually and by bloodline, I declare, let death lose its grip over you now. Receive the last prayer that I pray for you to end this miracle service. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Please listen. Honor is a real grace. You can do everything to bring honor, and yet honor will not come. Honor is not about usurping authority over people. There is a real grace. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God, has anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. I pray for you. The kind of honor that needs to distinguish you for the sake of the kingdom in this season. May that grace and may that honor rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands everywhere and give Jesus praise. Mighty God. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Father, we thank you. By the wave offering we receive. We receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. Please let me say this. Let there be no movement till we are done. Every time we are almost done, many of you cancel out everything God has done through disobedience. Just give me two minutes and then we must leave. There are people here who are yet to truly surrender their life. Please keep standing. We believe in soul winning. And in reality, we believe that it is the greatest miracle. There are people here who came to this place confused, looking for Jesus sincerely. Religion refused to build you. Sometimes we men of God disappointed you, but you are still looking for Jesus. And there are others who are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but the way my life is right now, I need help. Now, whatever, whether you are inside, outside, we have two minutes for you. Please, win that war this time. Don't sit down dilly-dally. You know that you need Jesus. Wherever you are, inside, outside, I don't want you to be ashamed. Aside from overflow 3, overflow 2B, and overflow floor, you can just move to your various projected space. But you are here. Quickly, I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and stand here right now. Quickly. I don't expect you to be thinking about it. Keep standing. It's something you should know. Keep coming. Run to Jesus. Don't let any friend hold your hand and say, don't embarrass yourself. Don't let any relative keep you bound. Our time is gone, but your salvation is important. Keep coming. Keep coming. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed. Win that war and come. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. If you are not sure, make your way and come quickly. Apostle, I'm a leader in my fellowship. Join them quickly. We have one more minute, please. Those coming from outside, quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those online following from whatever nation, doesn't matter. Once you are following and you can hear my voice, listen to me. Please, believers listen. It is important that you get to know God in soul winning. Listen to me. It is not just an evangelic act for the church. It is not an orthodox act of God. It is not a man of God act of God. It is 
the only way men can be united. No matter what you do, if you're a man of God, you're a woman, don't be shy about speaking out over people who don't like you. It is important that people be given an opportunity. I bet you don't know what I'm going to say. If you really understand what the new birth is, you will desire even your enemies to be saved. It is the only good way to be saved. Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his son. Salvation is not a given thing. It is a free gift. Free is not a given thing. I salute all of you who have come here. Some of you have started wearing here. This is even your life. Some of you are not even sure what you are doing in that office. Some of you are here because only for the Lord. It doesn't matter. You see, the thing about the love of God is that the moment you fall in love with God, you will have help. Though you don't know what exactly you will do, the mercy of God is not upon your life. Religion is what drives people away from God. Is it still right to say that? Those around the Golden Gate are saying, Where is the Lord? Please go and tell me that they are here. If Jesus is in this place, you are not inviting a guest. It is from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you, that you are the son of God. This night, I receive Jesus as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that according to Scripture, I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I'm not only heaven bound, but I reign in life. I receive of the Holy Spirit from today. I declare and forever that I'm a child of God. Amen. I declare over you by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven for Lord himself is granting you a new beginning. I pray that you will know the ministry of the Holy Spirit in a new and a fresh way. I pray for you that you will know the anointing in a mighty way. For many of you who are standing here, may God use you to become mighty men and women of God. In the name of Jesus, I bless you with hunger for spiritual things. I bless you with passion for the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. A big congratulations. Now, please, I want all of you alongside um, those at the various overflows. There should be someone waving his or her hands. Please, I'd like you to follow them very quickly. And there will be a group of people who will address you. Let's do that very quickly. Let's do that quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Hallelujah. Now, our time is gone, but... Um, Please listen, we're about to take the announcements. Welcome the first timers and we are done. I sincerely apologize. Pray for us by God's grace. I know that God is one church away. We still have our place and we reschedule our services to allow us finish on time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I, I know I welcome everybody. We are going to welcome the first timers now. But particularly, I just want to honor a few people. First, I want to bless our precious people, the delegates from uh, the King's Court, the ORC. God bless you. Hallelujah. The Redeemed Christian Church of God, that, um, that's a church that Pastor Noel Basu comes from. God bless you. Thank you. They are a group of people. They are adorable people. These people take, they take care of you so much every time you have a meeting at their place. Thank God. The Lord has been blessing you. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your support. I want us to honor the pastors and the ushers. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you very much. And um, now I know there are so many people. Please don't find offense. It's by no way to be found. But we, we believe the Lord Palmer is one of our foundational um, values that we pillar to God. I just felt I should share some, some of the people that are part of this church to make sure that they don't miss out. Give our thanks. And I think, I hope I'm right, there used to be a, a very large number of people coming here. Please don't feel by yourself. That's you. May God bless you. Very humble and very great man. I love you. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Every other person who has come here, especially for those of you who came from so very far. Um,
Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and look at her. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.